I mostly cook for myself. So I see that as almost a, a this is going to be like the worst term, but like an act of uh, self love. Uh huh. <laughs> Uh, this is going to be clipped out, uh, but, uh, that like, it's almost an exploration of like, what brings me joy and it's surprising because I usually don't share because the things that bring me joy are the simplest ingredients. Like I'm one of those people, I don't know if you can psychoanalyze me because you also like basic ingredients. I like a single ingredient, two ingredients, because I, I feel like I can deeply appreciate the particular ingredient. Then I get easily distracted. You know, people who are really good at listening to music, they can hear a piece of music and in their mind extract the different layers and enjoy different layers at a time, like the bass, the drums, the different layering of the piano, the beats and all that kind of stuff. Th that's what it means to truly enjoy music, to, to listen to a piece over and over, like almost like as a scholar. In that same way for food, I just can't do more than like three because then it's just, I have to uh, give in to the chaos of it, I guess. But when it's just a basic ingredient, like just meat, and we're just a vegetable, like basic grilled without sauces, without any of that. That I've discovered is what brings me a lot of joy, but that's boring to a lot of people. <laughs> so I usually have to be kind of private uh, about that joy. So, but that's mine. So yeah, I figured that out. And you, I guess as a, as a chef, you have to figure that out about everybody that you care for. Well, also for you, you're very interested in things and and interested in things being done well and appreciating them. So the single ingredient also allows you to control for perfection and cooking that, which is probably really appealing yeah. to you. Yeah. Um, and I think sometimes I see people also in the beginning of their journey of culinary trying to do too many things, right? So there's another piece too that you'll notice, if you recall last night, I grilled us the salad, right? Mm -hmm. And then I did all those pieces separately. And that's something in general to be really attentive of when you're building flavor to make sure you pay attention to every piece separately. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the idea that you can, okay, with a soup or something or a stew, there's there's workarounds, but like to make a great dish that's got four or five vegetables in it, cook them all separately mm -hmm. to their optimal deliciousness and then combine them. So that's another way to approach that is that you may also be able to look at the different ingredients separately and still have that sense of like understanding of it. But there's too often that we're layering together like four or five things and then cooking them all at once and then surprise that it's not delicious. Yeah. Because you can't you can't really optimize on multiple variables at the same time for peak awesomeness. And that's actually, you know, the, the number one way you see this is roasting a whole chicken, mm -hmm. which is a really difficult, it's the simplest dish, but it's very difficult because you have the breast meat, which is bigger chunks. They cook faster. You have the, the thighs and, and drums, which are um, smaller and they cook slower to optimize that and pay attention to it and do it all right, there you're actually solving for different outcomes. So there's a there's one example, but oftentimes food is less delicious with multiple ingredients at the start mm -hmm. because we're not able to pay attention to how each one needs to end up. So there's a way to parse that apart and achieve a better outcome.